You guys, I know the feeling all too well. It's midsummer. It's hot. You've just wrapped up a week of hard work or gaming or wholesome outdoor activities or an ideal mix of the three, and you can't help but wonder what happened this week in the world of technology. Was there scandal? Were there leaked benchmarks and new hardware rumors? Did the heavens open up for one glorious moment, allowing PC gamers to gaze upon the noble visage of Gaben himself, who graciously bestowed his wisdom upon us about the new M.2 slot in the Steam Deck? The answer is yes, my friends, and all these things will be shared today in a truncated and easily digestible format on Paul's Tech News. Excellent! Today's video is brought to you by MSI's MPG Series Z590 motherboards, built for Intel 11th Gen Core processors. Whether you prefer the blacked out look of the Gaming Plus, the Wi-Fi 6E support of the Edge Wi-Fi, or the extra power for overclocking provided by the Z590 Force or the Carbon Wi-Fi, every board is packed with features like 2.5 gig LAN, 20 gigabit USB 3.2, Audio Boost 5, premium VRM cooling, and of course, PCI Express Gen 4 support with supplemental PCIe power. RGB2? Yes, RGB2. Click the sponsor link in the description for more on the MPG Z590 motherboards from MSI. The big news this week was about bricked RTX 3090s, and the cause was Amazon's New World MMO, which launched a closed beta Tuesday. Proud RTX 3090 owners, who likely paid upwards of two grand for their cards, began reporting hardware failures almost immediately, and Amazon customer service posted a known issue thread with some fixes, including enabling a frame rate cap on Wednesday. Symptoms included high GPU usage and frame rates in menus, fans running at max, game crashes, and total card failures, prompting Amazon Game Studios to publicly acknowledge the hardware failures on Wednesday afternoon. Unfortunately, the message downplayed the problem by contrasting it to the hundreds of thousands of people who had played the game and saying that they hadn't seen an indication of widespread issues. While scattered reports have surfaced claiming game crashes or other issues occurred with cards aside from the RTX 3090, Igor's lab followed up Thursday and pointed the finger at EVGA cards in particular, whose ICX branded cards have had their fan controllers burn out completely. Because the failures are happening in the wild and actual data on the issue can be difficult to confirm, it's still too early to say what the exact cause is, but it is apparent that more than a handful of 3090s have given up the ghost during the worst global GPU shortage ever. Not the best timing, but despite their disappointing initial response, the New World dev team has issued a hotfix for the game to prevent more cards from dying, and EVGA has also confirmed that they will replace all RTX 3090s affected by this issue. And according to Jay of Jay's Two Cents, they're already cross-shipping replacement GPUs once the RMA is confirmed, which is what they should be doing if they want to make the best of a bad situation. They've even added New World as an RMA reason category if you're submitting a ticket for your card. Gamers who are on the lookout for reasonably priced GPUs might have another option soon, as Eurasian Economic Commission filings have once again revealed new cards on the horizon. This time, the EEC listed Navi 23-based RX 6600 and RX 6600 XT GPUs from PowerColor destined for retailers in New Zealand. There were also a few RX 6900 XTU cards shown based on the Navi 21 XTXH GPU, which is the fastest one currently available from Team Red, 13 RX 6600 XT SKUs, and 11 RX 6600 SKUs include the Red Devil, Hellhound, and Fighter series, and for now it looks like they're only planning on 8GB versions of the non-XT 6600, which is good, because who wants a 4GB card in 2021? Actually, lots of people do. GPUs are really hard to come by right now. But the point is that these cards will probably compete with the RTX 3060, so they should have a sub $400 launch price, and Video Cards thinks there will be a launch announcement on July 30th, with GPUs going up for sale on August 11th. And I know I've said this before, but more GPUs on the market should be a good thing, especially if the supposed retail price is in the mid-range. But unless a lot changes in the next few weeks, the RX 6600 cards will probably also soon be available from a marketplace seller on Amazon or Newegg soon for two to three times the MSRP. Yay, GPU shortage. Activision Blizzard has been sued by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing, with allegations including unequal pay, promoting men over women, and widespread sexual harassment that was uncovered during a two-year investigation. The company's initial response was to deride the lawsuit as disgraceful and unprofessional, but then they realized that there was a two-year investigation and a lot of specific incidents were detailed, like alcohol-fueled cube crawls, rape jokes, a frat house-like work environment, and sexual discrimination that was ignored, encouraged, or carried out by top executives. 
formal complaints were dismissed and records were not kept confidential, leading to retaliation and abuse towards those who didn't look the other way when incidents would occur. Tragically, one female employee even took her own life while on a company trip. The suit alleges this occurred after intimate photos of her were passed around at a co-worker's party. An internal email sent Thursday night responding to the reports carries a different tone than Activision Blizzard's initial public denials, however, with Blizzard President J. Allen Brock stating that the allegations and the hurt of current and former employees are extremely troubling and that it takes courage to come forward and all claims are investigated in these situations. At this point though, these words come across as meaningless platitudes following the corporate crisis management flowchart of denial, appeasement, issuing empty promises, and then just going back to business as usual. It's an unfortunate cycle that has played out numerous times in the industry with companies like Ubisoft and Riot. Gamers, meanwhile, are once again left with a moral dilemma, whether or not to continue to financially support a company with yet another stain on its reputation. Communities that have developed around popular titles like World of Warcraft and Overwatch have weathered Blizzard's fall from grace since the Activision merger with growing weariness, and many have left for good. Others have made it a point to spread the word about what's going on with the company, such as the role-playing guild Fence Macabre, who organized an in-game protest in World of Warcraft, which might seem self-defeating if they're still paying for the game, but many participants stated that they were just there to show support for the victims, and they do not plan to renew their subscriptions once their game time expires. Even that can be a tough decision though, because Blizzard is a diverse company, and there are a lot of passionate employees there who had nothing to do with these incidents. It's not a simple choice, and I can't add too much more without getting too editorial, but hopefully we can all agree on this. It should not be acceptable to treat your fellow humans with anything less than the utmost dignity and respect, regardless of their sex, race, age, or any other innate qualities that they have no control over. And please, whether you're in the game industry or elsewhere, call out people who act like douchebags, even if it's uncomfortable, because shitty actions should have shitty consequences. Okay, moving on. The Steam Deck was all anyone could talk about last week, and a few more tidbits have trickled out since pre-order reservations went live last Friday. Valve's marketing department has been unresponsive or vague at best when asked directly about the handheld device's M.2 slot, so user Midnight Watch from the Steam subreddit went over their heads, calling upon a higher power by simply emailing the man himself, Gabe Newell, to ask if the SSD could be upgraded. And lo, did Gaben speaketh, saying unto them, 2230 M.2 slot, and it was good. Another humble user, Bernardo1, also asked if the slot was present in the $400 base model, causing Gaben to smile and say unto him, yes. And yea, the people did rejoice, and there was much feasting and merriment, for M.2 2230 SSDs can be purchased for like 40 or 50 bucks on eBay for a 250 gig model, or uh, maybe closer to 90 or 100 for a 512 gig model, at least right now, if you're okay with shopping on eBay. This makes the base model Steam Deck much more appealing if the slot can be accessed without too much difficulty, which remains to be seen. Even though the spec page on steamdeck.com has been updated with this info now, naysayers have pointed out that Valve's reluctance to disclose this up front was likely purposeful to encourage sales of the more expensive Steam Steam Deck models, given that the $400 base price likely leaves only the slimmest of margins with the cost of the hardware involved. And even though the leaked reservation numbers that I shared last week totally back up the fact that this definitely worked, with two-thirds of the orders being for the most expensive $650 512GB model, those naysayers were casting aspersions upon His Holiness the Gaben, and so they have been stoned for their transgressions. Speaking of people who should be stoned, and not in the good way, scalpers, the notorious bottom feeders making all of our lives miserable by leveraging the basic economics of supply and demand had already listed hundreds if not thousands of Steam Deck pre-order reservations on eBay for prices upwards of $1,000 each. Their attempts to turn the Steam Deck into the next RTX 3080-like cash cow have been thwarted, at least for now though, because it's against eBay policy to auction off your pre-sale spot in line for something unless it's 30 days or less from launch. And indeed, on the US and UK sites at least, those scalper sales have largely vanished, aside from a handful of recently posted ones which have disappeared even since I went to record this video. So well done, eBay. I'm sure those scalpers have learned their lesson and will totally change their ways now. 
Speaking of changing things up, if early leaks are any indication, Intel made the right call with their design choices for Alder Lake desktop CPUs that are expected to launch in Q4 of this year. Twitter leaker OneRaishu posted supposed Cinebench R20 scores for the 12900KS flagship CPU, water-cooled but not overclocked, and also noted over 200 watts of power consumption at peak frequency prior to power limits expiring, but the, the scores are impressive if true, hitting over 810 points single-threaded and 11,600 multi-threaded. That's enough to beat a 5950X by 18%, even though the Alder Lake chip only has 24 threads, since the efficient half of its 16 cores don't have hyper-threading. The 810-point single-thread score also puts it 22% faster than AMD's best in that metric. CPU Monkey has gone a step farther by including leaked scores for all three top Intel Alder Lake CPUs in their charts now. With the 12900K hitting 817 points on a single thread, the 12700K getting up to 768, and the 12600K hitting 750. Impressive, if true, and some nice gains over Intel's 11th gen and AMD's Zen 3-based Ryzen 5000 series. Maybe Intel can come back and provide some competition so AMD will lower its CPU prices. It still feels weird saying that. The probable reason that we're seeing Alder Lake leaks is that board partners were evidently sent qualification sample CPUs recently, which they need in order to test the LGA 1700 motherboards with 600 series chipsets that they're designing for the new platform. A hardware blogger on Billy Billy has been sharing info about an anom anon anonymous seller who is moving 12900K CPUs by the hundred, with asking prices ranging from $1,065 to $1,250 US. Apparently the CPUs are easier to source than the motherboards right now though, because only a single B660 motherboard from an unnamed brand was also sold for $1,140. Who is buying these overpriced pre-launch CPUs with no boards to install them to? How did the underground seller in question get so many qualification sample units to sell. Can any of this information be used for our own personal gain? I don't know. I, I don't know the answers to any of those three questions. And so we move on to tech briefs where we keep the stitches small for minimal scarring. I don't know about you, but I like a well-made acronym. So I just wanted to express my appreciation for the Facilitating American Built Semiconductors Act, or the FABS Act, that's currently making its way through the United States Senate it would establish an investment tax credit to incentivize greater domestic semiconductor manufacturing, which a lot of folks are interested in after realizing just how much the world relies on TSMC for cutting edge silicon manufacturing over the past year or two. Speaking of advances in silicon manufacturing, Intel is finally producing more 10 nanometer wafers than 14 nanometer, according to statements made during their Q2 2021 earnings call this week. Intel initially discussed 10 nanometer all the way back in 2012, setting a launch date for 2015, which was then delayed to 2016, then 2017, then 2018, and so on, with each pushback seeing them fall back to yet another 14 nanometer design with another plus added to it. 14 nanometer plus 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 has reached meme status now, so good that Intel's 10 nanometer process is finally ready for prime time, with Alder Lake launching on desktop and mobile this year. As a bonus, they also said their 10 nanometer wafer costs have been reduced by 45% since this time last year, so I guess that must have been what they were spending all that time working on. Despite that good news about 10 nanometer though, Intel CEO Pat Gelsinger was not optimistic about the ongoing global semiconductor shortage and said as much during an interview after their earnings call on Thursday. Although shortages could ease by the end of this year, supply chain issues will continue to affect the industry through 2023, which is the year after 2022. Hopefully they're just erring on the side of caution, that would be understandable given how long it's taken them to get over those 10 nanometer predictions they made back in 2012. ARM is making CPUs using plastic as a base instead of silicon. They call it plastic ARM, like the one your GI Joe was always missing, and after 10 years of development, they've used the technique to produce a functional non-silicon version of their popular M0 microcontroller. Manufacturing is cheaper by orders of magnitude versus the old method, and the flexible chips can be integrated into materials like product packaging, clothing, and medical bandages for a variety of potential use cases. Maybe they can make smart socks that self-destruct when one of them inevitably goes missing. Or if you try to wear them with sandals. Rounding things out, Twitter announced a limited rollout of an often requested feature on the iOS platform on Wednesday. No, it's not an edit button, but it's almost as good. It's a downvote button. 
While down votes wouldn't be shown publicly, they would allow pessimists to escape the shackles of a world where only upvotes and positivity matter. Sometimes things suck, and it can be quite satisfying to just plop a big ol' thumbs down on a thing that is indeed sucky. Reddit, of course, jumped in on the Twitter upvote and downvote announcement with a well-played meme. So there you have it guys, tech news for the week, and hopefully it was satisfying enough to earn your upvote if you're feeling that. But either way, your feedback is always welcome, so please take a moment to leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the description if you're interested in further reading. You can also click the like button like I mentioned. If you enjoyed the video, check out my store at paulsharbor.net for a selection of excellent merchandise options, and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future. I hope you're all having a great summer. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you in the next video.